Hello and welcome to this year's Planet Pageant, sponsored by the Milky Way. Life's better in the Milky Way. I'm your host, The Sun. Today is going to be a lot of fun, but as you know, everything revolves around me. <laughs> you know, because I'm a star. <laughs> Actually, all the planets in our solar system orbit around me because of how big I am. An orbit is the path of an object around a particular point in space. In this case, that's me. My gravitational pull keeps all the planets from flying into outer space. Anywho, you might be wondering how we were able to get everyone in one place at one time. I'm here to tell you we had to plan it. <laughs> Today, you'll see all eight of the planets in our solar system get to know them a little better. It might be hard to remember the order of the planets, but if you use this mnemonic phrase, it'll help you remember. My very excited mother just served us noodles. See? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. All right, let's go ahead and get started with today's events. Please welcome to the stage my closest neighbor, Mercury! Well, hello everyone. The queen has arrived. It's me, Mercury. Now, I don't know how you could possibly not know who I am, but just so you know, the sun and I are totally best friends because I'm the closest planet to him. I'm only like 28 million miles away, unlike some planets I know, like Saturn, who's like 900 million miles away. Mm-hmm, I said it, girl. And yes, I am the smallest planet in the solar system, but since I am, again, the closest planet to the sun, it only takes me 88 days to rotate around the sun, which means that a year goes by on my planet in just 88 Earth days. And since I am again the closest planet to the sun, people always assume that I'm scorching hot all the time when I'm actually 800 degrees during the day and drop down to negative 290 degrees at night. Last, I don't have any moons and I don't have any rings, but my metallic core did help me create the most beautiful wrinkles and comets and asteroids love me so much that they always crash into me and help create the most iconic craters on my surface. Okay, so it's taken me a while to spin around on my axis. So I'll see you later, sun bestie. Smooches. Wasn't she delightful? Do you know why Mercury didn't have to go to college? because she already had so many degrees. <laughs> All right, our next planet doesn't let the pressure get to her. Please welcome Venus. Hello, all you lovely people out there and welcome to Venus. We're broadcasting to you from the surface to give you an exclusive sneak peek of what it's like here. I have so many great qualities, but let's narrow it down to five things to know about me. Number one. I'm the warmest planet in our solar system because all my shiny sulfuric acid clouds and my heavy carbon dioxide rich atmosphere. My off the charts average temperature is 880 degrees Fahrenheit. Number two, I've always said I march to the beat of my own drum. I rotate the opposite way of every other planet in the solar system. Some might call it upside down, but I consider myself a trendsetter. Number three, a day on Venus is longer than a year. My year is 224 Earth days, while my day lasts 243 Earth days. Number four. On Earth, you call me the morning and evening star. I'm the brightest star in the heavens because I'm so reflective. And I was the first one to have my path across the sky recorded. Number five. Even though it's exclusive and hard to get to, my surface has mountains and scientists believe there are also active volcanoes. There's lots more to discover, but that's for me to know and you to find out. Talk soon. Next to the stage is a very familiar planet. You might even say she's got the life of the solar system. <laughs> Please give a warm but not too warm welcome to Earth. Psst. Hey Earth, it's your turn. 
I'm not ready yet. I need things to be just right. Let's get a little closer. Perfect. It's me. I'm Earth. And I must be your favorite. If I was any closer to the sun, it would be too hot to sustain life. And if I was any further away from the sun, it would be too cold. Psh, whatever, she's just a perfectionist. Don't worry if the moon seems kind of cranky, it's just a phase. We met 4.5 billion years ago when a rock the size of Mars hit me. The debris from that accident got pushed together by gravity and formed the moon over here. They are my bestie. You're my best friend too, Earth. What was that? I couldn't hear you. I said you're my best friend. Gosh, you even have to control how loud I say things. I can't help it. I'm the Earth after all. Things have to be just right. <laughs> Wave goodbye to the Earth and hello to our next planet. No, it's not made of chocolate, but it's still quite a treat. Mars! So this is Mars. They call us the red planet because a lot of our rocks are full of iron. And when iron is oxidized from being outside, it looks kind of reddish. But you know, red is such an angry color and I'm definitely not an angry planet. I mean, sure, the name Mars comes from the ancient Roman god of war, but like Clifford was a big red dog and no one ever thinks he's angry all the time, right? Whatever. So people are always asking, is there life on Mars? There are ice caps at the North and South Poles and where there's water, sometimes there's life, but I'm just like Martian life forms. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to find out, <laughs> but I'm really not supposed to talk about that. Anyway, Mars is one of the most explored places in our solar system and Earthlings are always trying to take pictures with their telescopes and orbiters and Mars is the only planet where they've actually sent rovers to explore the landscape. But I mean, Mars is a pretty cool planet with all the rocks and craters and valleys and did I mention we have the largest volcano in the solar system? But I'm just like, oh my gosh, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> Ooh, I have an idea. Let's see what they posted about Mars on the NASA website. Mars today is a hostile world blanketed in toxic soil and zapped with radiation. Who wrote this? <laughs> this interview is over. I need to get my agent on the phone. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Vamos a despegar. Woohoo! Let's go to outer space or el espacio exterior. What do you know about space? Travel with me to space in our fancy rocket ship or cohete espacial. Let's make our way into outer space. We will fly by what looks like to be eight planets or planetas. Next, we are quickly approaching what looks to be like some asteroids and comets or asteroides y cometas. These are all part of the solar system, or Sistema Solar. The solar system is a gravitationally bound system of the sun and the objects that orbit it, either directly or indirectly. Of the objects that orbit the sun directly, the largest are the eight planets, or ocho planetas. Mercurio, Venus, Tierra, Marte, Júpiter, Saturno, Neptuno, Urano. And let's not forget about the brightest and largest object in our night sky, which is the moon, or la luna. Well, thanks for joining me, and see you next time. Hasta luego! This is where things get a little rocky. Just kidding! All the planets we've talked to so far are made of rock. We're now about to check out the gas giants. Oh, and I spot our next planet right now. Please welcome Jupiter. I am Jupiter, the first, greatest, and grandest planet named for the king of the ancient Roman gods. I could have been a star. I am made of the same stuff as stars, hydrogen and helium, but I didn't get big enough to ignite, so I'll settle for being the biggest planet in the solar system. 
Now, on to my impressive appearance. My wonderful stripes and swirls are cold, windy clouds floating in my atmosphere. My great red spot is a giant storm bigger than Earth that has raged for hundreds of years. And my string of pearls is also a series of massive storms. I have so many moons that they are hard to count. Right now, scientists think that I have 79. My four largest moons are particularly impressive. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, even bigger than the planet Mercury. Io has the most volcanoes of anywhere in the solar system, and Callisto and Europa are believed to have oceans hiding under their surface, which means they could support life, maybe even human life. Humans could definitely not live on my surface, partly because I don't have one. I am a gas giant and may not even have a solid inner core, but I provide a very important service for the solar system. My great gravitational pull attracts space debris that might otherwise crash into the other planets. You are welcome. Thank you, Jupiter. You were gastronomical today. Well, shall we move on to our next guest? I think we should. She's the undefeated solar system hula hoop champion. Yes, that's right. If you like her, you better put another ring on it. Saturn! Greetings, friends. It's me, Saturn, the universe's own material girl. Now, although I am the sixth planet from the sun, and as Mercury so nicely stated, 900 million miles away, I still shine bright like a diamond and can be seen from Earth without a telescope. You probably recognize me because of my beautiful rings. I have over 30 rings that are as wide as the distance from the Earth to the Moon and they're made of millions of chunks of ice. The astronomer Galileo discovered my rings over 400 years ago and scientists are still trying to figure me out. Did you know that one day on Saturn goes by in just 10 hours? But one year on my planet, or the time that it takes for me to rotate on my path around the sun, is 29 Earth years? Can you imagine having a birthday every 30 years? And last, unlike Mercury, I have 53 moons and 20 other moons that are waiting to be named and fact checked. I'm the windiest planet of them all. My wind speeds can get up to 1,100 miles per hour. And get this. Although I'm the second largest planet, I'm also the lightest planet because my core is a gas rather than a solid like Earth. I can seriously float on water. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Ta-ta! Thank you, Saturn. You really should give me a ring sometime. <laughs> well, it's time to bring out our last two planets. Although they're blue, they're not always sad. Please welcome the twins, Uranus and Neptune. Of course we are last. I'm Uranus. Hi, everybody. We never get to go first. I'm Neptune. I guess it makes sense since we are the furthest planets away from the sun. Out here it gets mighty cold. I mostly stay 1.8 billion miles away from the sun. Brr, that's cold. Oh yeah, well I'm 2.7 billion miles away from the sun. Man, even Pluto gets closer to the sun than me sometimes. Oh, that crazy Pluto. I'm sure we'll learn more about them later. Well, at least I'll always have you, Uranus. Why do they always call us twins? I don't think you and I look alike very much. Well, it's because we're both ice giants. That and our gaseous compositions are very similar. Oh, is that why we're both blue? Yes, we're both blue. Unlike Earth, we're blue, but not because of the oceans. It's because of our gas. I tend to be more bluish green because I have methane and a lot of it. And I tend to be more blue because of hydrogen and helium. It's not so bad being so cold, as long as I have you, Neptune. Yes, and as long as I have you, Uranus. Wasn't that just a gas? They reminded me my favorite music has always been Neptune's. <laughs> 
Well, distinguished guests, it has come to my attention that many of you are wondering why poor Pluto hasn't been invited to the pageant today. I know many of you have grown up being taught that there were nine planets in our solar system, with Pluto being the ninth. But you see, there are three criteria that planets need to have in order to be called a planet. One, it has to orbit around the sun. Two, it has to have a sufficient mass to form a round shape. So in other words, it must be round. And number three, lastly, it has to have cleared the neighborhood around its orbit. Pluto's orbit is in the Kuiper Belt, a region of the solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. The Kuiper Belt contains many comets, asteroids, and other small objects made of ice. Because of how small Pluto is, it has not cleared out its neighborhood of these objects. So Pluto is classified as a dwarf planet. In fact, there are other dwarf planets like Eris, Ceres, Make Make, and Haumea. Can you imagine how long this pageant would be if we had to include all the dwarf planets here too? We will always have a special place for Pluto in our heart. Well folks, that's all for this year's planet pageant. We hope you enjoyed it. This is the sun signing off. Good night, or should I say good day? What a fun tour of the universe. There's always more to discover and learn about. If you want to learn more, check out the Planets for Kids website. You can go to planetsforkids.org and explore lots of topics. They have a section about stars, moons, galaxies, and of course, the planets of our solar system. NASA has a kid-friendly resource at spaceplace.nasa.gov planets. National Geographic Kids has a quick overview of our solar system here on their website at kids.nationalgeographic.com and you go to the What is a Planet article. You can always go to the library to get information too. The call number for space books is 520 to 523 and there are lots of nonfiction books to choose from. For our beginning readers, you might like Space, Planets, Moons, Stars, and More by Joe Radigan. If you want a deeper knowledge dive, try the Super Space Encyclopedia by the Smithsonian. With large, full-color illustrations, it really brings space to life. To get a little bit of everything, try 50 Things You Should Know About Space by Raman Prinja. Thanks for joining us on today's Learn Dream Do episode. Now it's time for us to blast off. Bye!